Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings. Welcome to my monthly vlog for the month of March 2024. Slightly different one this month because if you probably watched my Easter greetings video, you'll know the reason for that. So I'm close by to where I live here in Gloucestershire. I'm currently at the top of Coley Peak, sometimes known as Froster Hill. I'll explain the difference between those two names because people are often confused by them. So I'm close to the town of Stroud, overlooking the Severn Vale. Not to be confused where I was earlier in the month, the Severn Valley. Same river, slightly different geographical location. Severn Vale, of course, is where the river becomes wider and we're following our journey, of course, aren't we? Along the Severn Way, because we've got so far to Sharpness. So welcome to the monthly vlog. I'm actually going to be doing it in a little bit of a quieter area, but I thought I'd do the opening shots here because rarely we've got some sunshine and it's also a very clear day so I hope you appreciated those views extending right across the Vale towards May Hill and to the edges of the Welsh border though I didn't quite catch the uh, Breckhams here today so we're going to go somewhere less windier a little bit steadier so I can put it on the uh, tripod and that but uh, I thought we'd open here today so uh, I'll see you in a bit. Before I do that, I'll just tell you about the difference between Coley Peak and Froster Hill. Well, Coley Peak refers to a specific hill along the escarpment, and it's the hill which, unsurprisingly, is just above the village of Coley. There is a very narrow road or lane which goes drop steeply into that village. The name of the lane escapes me at the moment, but it's that uh, sharp, almost diagonal looking hill, which is where the hang gliders take off from. That's Coley Peak. And it's from that, that this viewpoint here above the town of Stroud and the Seven Vale, and also above the town of Dursley as well, takes its name from. There is also a nature reserve here. And if this looks familiar to you at all, it's because yes, you've guessed it, we have been here before. I was here last time on the channel when I was walking along the Cotswold Way, which is exactly what I'm doing at the moment. It was three years this summer, can you believe, I was walking this section of the Cotswold Way, making my way south to the city of Bath. Froster Hill, though, is the extended section of the escarpment in this section, which runs from Selsley Common, just again on, on the outskirts of the aforementioned Stroud, and it extends right across towards Yulee Bury before it then goes down a descent into the lovely little village of Yulee. I have to do a walk around there at some point because that's a really interesting area. So yeah, Froster Hill, the extended escarpment, Coley Peak, that very specific peak which just hangs above the little village of Coley, but uh, they also equally apply to, to this location and local people interchange both, but that's why it's called Coley Peak and as I say it's looked after and managed by Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust, an important reserve for this area, but uh, beautiful views there extending right across the Vale. Anyway, let's go and start this vlog.
So I've now come round to Tinkley Gate, which is close to Woodchester Park. It's a National Trust facility with car park, toilets and cafe. Today is Easter Saturday, so happy Easter. Hoping to get this out for late on Easter Sunday, the very last day of the month, and the clocks go forward, one hour loose, an hour in bed, spring forward, which will mean lovely, lighter evenings. Today's also the first day that we haven't had any rain for many days and the sun is coming out. So because it's Easter, there's lots of families here as well. Just to tell you a little bit about this, Tinkley Gate opened about a year or so ago now, and I did a separate video on the channel telling you all about Tinkley Gate. And I did a separate video too about Woodchester Mansion, and that's another reason why it's busy here today, because Woodchester Mansion is open. It's open to the public. It's not, not open during the autumn, late autumn and winter months. And I think it may be the first day that it's open today. So it's managed by a Stroud District Council, although it is in National Trust land here at Woodchester Park. Woodchester Park itself is actually known as a, a lost landscape. From the 18th century, there are five linking lakes, the very last of which has a man-made island built on it, which is now a heronry, so a wildlife sanctuary for herons. And a lot of those lakes contain large carp as well. So you can imagine the, um, the poor carp are hounded by all those herons from that island at the final lake here. So I'll insert a map so you can see that man-made island on that. If we've got time later in the video, we'll see if we can pop down there and have a look at that. And what we're going to do now is have a look at what's been happening here on West Country Wanderings for the month of March 2024. So now you can see the extents of Woodchester Park, which falls away from the top here by the car park and the cafe here at Tinkley Gate. And we'll make our way down there slowly. And there's also a tower there, which is a building, it's a residential property, but it's known as the Tower. The uh, origins of that, I really don't know. If you're local to this area and know all about the Tower, please drop a comment on this monthly vlog. The first video that landed actually though was in St Ives in Cornwall, a place I've got many associations with, not least of which if you've seen the video, you'll know that I worked there for, well, about five and a half years when I was managing Woolworths there in the town. I really enjoyed making that video. It was a, a stunning day. I think I did it at the early part of this month, March. Might have been actually at the end of February, but uh, it's been a long month for various different reasons. But yes, that video video there attracted a lot of attention because it's the first time we've actually visited St Ives here on West Country Wanderings, which is really, really good. And I had a great comment on that video from a gentleman called Bernard Smith, who was actually born in the town. Wonderful place to grow up. And he's got some great recollections and I'll just read to you his comment now. Bernard writes, I was born in St Ives in 1954. My parents lived in Harbour Cottage, right next to Woolworths. St Ives was my dad's first posting as a police constable. In 1960, my grandparents bought a guest house right down near the harbour. Whenever we subsequently lived in Cornwall, I spent all my school summer holidays there with great memories. I'm sure you had fabulous memories of that and what a place to grow up, Bernard, particularly in those days when it was probably a lot less busy than it is today but it still remains a magnificent town and one of my very very favorite places in Cornwall. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. Anyway we're going to continue down the little bit hill and uh, I'll tell you about the next video that landed on my channel. Well as luck would have it I've just come uh, quite a bit away from the car park now on the footpath which kind of winds its way in a big looping circle making its way gradually down to the bottom of Woodchester Park. I found this picnic table, no one else around here so it's really quiet in this section and uh, bought myself a, a cup of tea out of the old uh, thermos there. Uh, the cafe actually here though is a good cafe, it's very very busy and I don't want to waste time queuing up to get some coffee there, it's nice though that it is. Before I mention anything else, before I forget, if you haven't seen my Easter greeting uh, video and uh, you don't have to see it, but I, I just want to explain why the little monthly vlog is a little bit different this month. And that's because 
I was going to plan to do this month from Avebury Stone Circle in Wiltshire on the North Wessex Downs because I hadn't been to uh, Wiltshire for a little while but uh, unfortunately I had a little bit of bad news. My dad has ta been taken poorly actually about uh, just a few days ago I had to to ring the paramedics for him to to come to to our house in Gloucestershire and uh, they were there for about an hour and they took my father away to a local hospital which is where he still resides at the moment so I'm spending uh, time visiting him and also looking after my mum who's in a, a wheelchair following a stroke a, a few years ago so my time is greatly reduced at the moment in, in terms of capacity for making videos hence why I need to be local so I'm only a very short drive away from where I live and uh, so that's why the video is here and not in uh, Avebury the videos going out also will be shorter and more local and what they usually are, I certainly won't be able to get into places like Somerset, Devon or Cornwall at the moment. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that again. Now, the good news is that uh, my father seems to be responding well to treatment. I went over and saw him yesterday afternoon. Going to be going over and see him tomorrow, Easter Sunday. And uh, he's making good progress. So I'm speaking to him a couple of uh, times a day, although it is a bit soul destroying being in hospital if you've been in hospital yourselves you know they're not the greatest environments they can be quite noisy environments but uh yes yeah, so, and I, I also like to thank all of you that have passed comments both through my facebook group and also in the comments on that easter greetings video wishing my father well that is very very much appreciated and i've passed those thanks and goodwill messages onto my dad as well and i can tell you that has really buoyed him up and made a difference too so i really do appreciate that and uh, i will keep you up to speed with what's happening with my dad and the channel as well but obviously the most important thing is family so as you can understand my focus main focus at the moment is, is around that rather than making videos but uh, i still wanted to come out and do a shorter and more local monthly vlog just to bring you up to speed with what's happening in the channel A long time before I was working in St Ives in the 1990s, in the 1980s I was actually working well many bases but one of them was at RAF Portreath in West Cornwall living in and around the town of Redruth which also made a clearance in my next video which was an also a railway series one it was part of my Cornish railway discoveries series and we had a look thanks to my daughter who had some local knowledge more better memory than me and uh, some more remembered places in and around that having a look at the former Portreath branch line which extended as a mineral line from the Cornish port of Portreath where they brought in Welsh coal and exported the tin from the port there via a steep incline and then crossing the top and joining up with the West Cornwall main line just outside the town of Redruth we had a look at the traces of that and we managed to find a bridge which I don't even remember seeing before thanks to my daughter so thank you very much for Nicole for helping me on that Cornish railway adventure I had a great comment on that video from Richard Wadley and he writes around 1960 or 1961 my parents brought us on a summer holiday to Patrith traveling by train from Portishead to Redruth and then bus to Patrith harbour we stayed in a caravan near the dock and right at the foot of the disused branch incline, which I think is in the process of being open. So you'll be able to walk up that soon, which will be fantastic. During our one week holiday there, we saw two very small German flag motor coast cruisers, should I say, or coasters, only about 250 tons, which arrived with coal from Ghoul in Yorkshire. It's an incredible thing to see that. Uh, I, all that had gone by the time I was there in the 1980s. This was domestic coal, of course, the tin mines being long closed by then. That's a fantastic comment, Richard. Thank you very much for it. Every so often on the channel, I like to throw what I call a curved ball video in, which doesn't really fit into my usual categories of walking in the Cotswolds, Cornish, Devon coast, canals or railways. And it was one of those that I did next in my short bite series. When I was filming nearby the wire forest, that video's mentioning in a bit, 
I came across a graveyard, which I had been aware of for a little while, just outside the town of Beaudley in North Worcestershire. And that is a very, very interesting graveyard indeed. It has a lot of history and one or two real, real true oddities and histories associated with it. And uh, that uh, seems to have gone down really well, that uh, video, and a lot of you are intrigued by that and looking into more details about uh, the Dowell's graveyard. And again, I had a great comment on that from Richard Bird. It brought to mind a location not far from where I live in the Peace District called the Infidel Cemetery close to Monsor Head. I think there's a railway line there, isn't there? It used to go between Matlock and Buxton on the Midland Railway. All the remaining gravestones there have no mention whatsoever to either God or Jesus. Very, very strange. It has an eerie feel to it. Yes, I'm sure it has, Richard. Thank you very much for that great comment. And uh, the, the church, I, I don't... Um, believe in supernatural or any of that sort of thing. I know that uh, graveyard has, though, been covered many, many times by the supernatural hunters, if you like, ghost hunters on YouTube, but that's not the sort of thing that I do. I just thought you'd find it interesting, but uh, every so often I'll throw one of those videos out which don't fit the usual format of my videos. I do apologise for the noise at this point of the video. Close to here, as well as being this being in the heart of Woodchester Park, is the Bristol and Gloucestershire Gliding Club. And because it's such a nice day today, it's also Easter holidays, it's very, very active with light aircraft and getting those gliders up in the sky so that the uh, people in the gliders can enjoy the magnificent views across the Severn Vale and across to Wales, who can blame them. But uh, yeah, that's what that noise is uh, above my head at the moment. The other thing to note is that uh, unfortunately I've decided not to continue on this footpath. It is just so slippery and sliding. I will show you the lakes in another day and we'll go down and, and have a look at those in, a, in, a, in another video properly and explore Woodchester Park in a separate video. Now, there was some exciting news on the Cotswold Canals, and that was that planning permission has been approved to complete the missing mile. So I thought, I need to get out a video to uh, tell my audience all about that and the implications of that. And that was uh, Stradwater and Thames and Seven Canals update number 15A. And I had a great comment on that from Ron from Parkinson's Walks. Hi, Ron, always love your vlogs and videos about places in Gloucestershire and further afield as well. So really great to hear from you. I'll put a link in to Ron's channel in the description of today's video. Ron writes, hi Paul, thanks for the update. I get all my canal news through you. These are exciting times indeed. I can't wait for the next phase of the work to get started. Well done, Stroud District Council indeed, and I'll be uh, showing progress on that as soon as it starts restoration on that. So uh, that'll be right here on West Country Wanderings. And so from canals to railways, we'll come back to canals shortly. The next video on the channel was looking well, it's a lost railway walk, sort of. I just entitled it the Wire Forest Railway because I didn't have too much time to complete a walk all the way to Tembury. Well, that'd be too far running. Not that you can walk all the way to Tembury, but just about, a, I think it was about a three mile section of it that you can walk through the Wire Forest itself, not far from Bewdley. And it left the Severn Valley Railway, making its way to Tembury, where it joined up with the Tembury Wells Railway, which came out of Wolverton on the Hereford and Shrewsbury Main Line. A beautiful area, and I was so glad I managed to find the original Wire Forest Railway Station, which has been beautifully restored, and is now a private residence in the heart of the Wire Forest, near the village of Far Forest. Had a great comment on that video from Michael Miller. Hi, Michael. Thank you very much for your comment. I seem to remember seeing the remains of that viaduct. Yes, that's Dowell's viaduct, which is a close to the aforementioned graveyard I was talking to you about, to Warren Forest from a train near Bewdley. And I've got, wait for this, a 1909 railway magazine article. Wow, so that's over, well, again, over 120 years old, about the Ditton Priors Railway. And I think it features an inclined plane railway. Yes, it's just outside of my area, that particular line, a branch off the Wire Forest Railway, because it goes into Shropshire, sh serving the town of Clebury Mortimer. It continued on 
to Ditton Priors, and uh, he then was serving a, I think it was a Royal Naval base, wasn't it? It was an armaments depot that continued into, I think it was around 1959, 1960 when the line closed, although the armaments base went on a little bit longer. You can actually see evidence of it still from the Ordnance Survey map, but uh, yeah, an inclined plane on that uh, light railway there to Clebury and Ditton Price. Thank you very much for that comment, Michael. If you're newer to the channel, you may not realise they do various different formats and styles of uh, videos here. And one of those is what I call my short bike photography series. And it was to one of those that the next video landed here on West Country Wanderings. And that was to the Severn side village of Newnham on Severn. So the other side of the River Severn to where I currently am here in Gloucestershire. And it's uh, not that far away, getting up from places like Chepstow and uh, Monmouth as well. It sits on the main A48. Gloucester Chepstow Road, but I've always found it a fascinating village because of the numerous architectural styles in that. So I went around there with my camera, really enjoyed it. And in fact, that was done on my way back from last month's vlog when I was at Red Brick, wasn't it, on the River Wye. I had a great comment on that video from a gentleman called Malcolm Richardson, who is also very, very familiar with the village of Newnham on the Seven. So hi, Malcolm, thank you very much for your comment. And uh, you're also a big fan of this really interesting village. It's always just uh, kind of captivated me, the, the, the various styles and the interest of that. And uh, it accumulated its wealth, of course, because of the boat building that happened on the River Severn and all of the wealth it got from that, launching those boats onto the river and also with trade coming up from the Bristol Channel and all the ports there. So uh, great comment and I'll read it to you. A splendid riverside setting on a bluff on the edge of the Forest of Dean. The pleasant variety of architectural styles, its rich historical associations with Roman times and its marvellous churchyard high above the Severn where you can sit in peace and observe it sweeping south towards Seven Bridge in the distance. That's very good. That's a very good comment there, Malcolm. I very, very appreciate that. So thank you very much. Now, one of the other formats on my channel is my railway series, which can be of various different types, looking at heritage lines, more about one of those later, doing my Lost Railway Walk series, more about one of those as well. But also, they can be about the present day railway and the changes and impacts that are happening on that. We've looked at a, a couple of uh, stations that have opened at Marsh Barton and Portway, and there'll be another station opening in Bristol later this year. But the next one was about removal of some existing infrastructure on the Cornish mainline, replacing and upgrading the signal equipment. And I entitled that video, The Last of the Cornish Semaphores. Yes, I know if you're a little sad to see them go, obviously it's progress and times need to be modernized. And one of the reasons they've been taken out was to increase the capacity on the main line and also later the Newquay branch line, but also because of increasing reliability problems and the problems getting spares for those quite elderly bits of signalling infrastructure. I had a great comment on that from Andrew Merriman. As a former movements inspector, I think Andrew actually worked on the Cambrian coastline in central Wales uh, amongst a, a few of them. So he's got a wealth of experience and he's also written comments many times on uh, runs from Parkinson's Walks channel as well. So I was very privileged to get a, a great comment from Andrew. I know it can be confusing as in the signaling and how semaphores work at 6.38. I'll include an overlay of what happens at 6.38 in the video now. It shows the down main starting single pulled off. This is a standard four foot arm. This, the signal for the down main starting to good sloop is a three foot arm. The lenses are quite different. Yeah, that's the, uh, the coloured glass where the, the lamp glows so that the, the driver can actually see the signal, particularly at night time. You were very privileged to be allowed inside the signal box at Los Withiel. Yes, indeed I was. Thank you very much for that great comment. Uh, how that happened, I don't know if I've already explained this elsewhere, perhaps on Facebook. 
how it happened was that there was a young lad I spotted uh, hovering around the steps of the signal box when I was vlogging to camera and walking up and down the platform and noticed him out the corner eyes. And then I noticed he stepped inside the signal box. And I thought, well, that's a bit strange because children aren't normally allowed in uh, network rail boxes. But of course, this is uh, different times with it about to be going into demise. Now, as I speak to you, it, it has already gone. Uh, he was in there for a little while, I noticed he then came out again and he was on his own, so I thought, oh, well, it can't be the uh, signalman's uh, son. So, uh, because I'm really quite hesitant approaching people because of my autism, I plucked up the courage and just asked the uh, signalman, was it possible from where I was standing on the platform to take a couple of photographs of the inside of the signal box? Uh, he paused for a moment, I was expecting a, a very uh, loud no, and the door slammed in my face, but uh, complete opposite, he said, uh, come up the steps, welcome to have a good look around and take as many photographs you want, which I nearly fell over at that point. And uh, I was very pleased to be able to, to get those shots, which I included in that video, because uh, that signal box is now no more. The door has been locked forever and it has been disconnected, although it is grey too. So it will not be demolished and the insides will remain probably going on to some heritage rower line at some future point. And we continue with the next one, which was also a railway one. And it was on the Seven Valley Railway close to this River Seven here on the Seven Vale, a little bit further north in Worcestershire, you have the Seven Valley Railway, one of my very, very favourite heritage railway lines that I cover here on West Country Wanderings. And it was our very first trip indeed on the line itself. I have filmed it before from different angles and not least of which on the Seven Way when we caught it a couple of times, shots of it that was. But this is the first time I've been on it before, but it, not actually filmed it before for the channel so I was really excited to bring that. We will return there again. I had a trip to Hyley where there was a wonderful engine museum. There was lots going on there. Two great comments on this video. One from a volunteer who works on the Seven Valley Railway. He gentleman came round and checked my ticket in the compartment carriage. I was a volunteer that checked your ticket and the video did turn out nice. Glad you had a good time on the Seven Valley Railway. Yes, indeed I did and thank you. Thanks for all of the uh, volunteers that work on the Seven Valley Railway and also all of the heritage lines that I cover and I've yet to cover, still got many to cover here in the wider West Country. And also a comment from Louise, who runs a channel called Southwest Sundays. I'm sure nearly all of you knew that. So if you haven't, if you're new around here, check out Louise's brilliant channel. Again, I'll put a link to it in the description of today's video. And Louise writes, the hive looks a lovely resource. Yes, I started the video in the city of Worcester, where I was waiting for my train to Kidderminster. It's an amazing building there. I love heritage railways, and this one looks gorgeous. It certainly is. I could imagine myself staring at the window with the breeze gently blowing on my face as the train trundled through the countryside. Yes, that's an evocative image you paint there. Glider just going over my head as well. So thank you very much for that, Louise. Well, as well as all those railways and canals and looking up coast around Devon and Cornwall, I have another series and that is looking at walks in the Cotswold countryside, which followed on from doing the Cotswold Way. We've gone back in a full circle, haven't we? That's where I started the video, walking along the Cotswold Way at the very start of this blog. When I finished doing the Cotswold Way, then just started to just do a spin-off, if you like, looking at circular walks around the wider Cotswold area of outstanding natural beauty of which we are in very much so today here in this part of Gloucestershire and recently I headed over to the village of Bisley not that far from here about six or seven miles and did a circular walk from that most beautiful of villages and I talked about a famous person that lived in a nearby hamlet to Bisley at a place called Thrutherham Slad and a gentleman writes an interesting comment as an addition on to that and he is f called the weather adventures i'm not sure if that's a youtube channel uh, if it is i will put a, a link to the description of that gentleman's comment or video should i say in the description i'm on local land to this part of gloucestershire and i met mike oldfield when myself and the girlfriend were walking past the manor at thrutham slad in the 1970s oh that must be a tremendous memory there he was a bit shy but he did tell us that he was enjoying the lifestyle and the beauty of living here i'm sure he was you're probably wondering why he left thrutham slad because he had left in 
1978, only about two and a half years after he moved there. And he spent a small fortune doing the place up and building his own recording studio there at Thruffham Slad. Well, I found out. I found a recording of an ATV news. Remember ATV? That predated uh, Central News and the ITV Harbour. Well, they covered uh, all of the wider West Midlands, East Midlands, uh, and down to this part of the world as well. Gentleman on there, and I've forgotten his name now, but I certainly recognised him from the days I used to watch uh, ATV News out of uh, Birmingham there. And uh, he interviewed Mike Oldfield in his property at Threatham Side. It's a fascinating uh, piece of film, archive film, and in that he explains why he's about to sell up and move away from Thretham Slad, and the reason why was because of noise from aircraft. No, not Concorde, no, not the Red Arrows that were nearby that in those days at RAF Kemble, but because of fuel tanker aircraft from nearby RAF Hereford, uh, Hereford, <laughs> RAF Fairford, which is close by, uh, they were just starting uh, to, to put those aircraft in, and they make quite a bit of noise and Fethem Slad unfortunately is right under the, the flight path all those so unfortunately he decided that he couldn't overcome it with soundproofing in the studio and alas he moved away from Fethem Slad giving up the joys of living in that area but uh, it's such a shame but uh, I guess life moves on but uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, cry too much because he now lives in uh, Barbados, so uh, I'm sure he's enjoying the life out there too. The finally, for this month, we move back to canals. It was uh, part three of the secrets of the Thames and Seven Canal, looking at the Battle of Latin Bypass. Interesting tale I managed to piece together, and they're looking at the history of that. And I have a great comment on that from Diana Rolf. Always oh, great to hear from you, Diana. Thank you for a great comment on that video. Thanks for taking the trouble to comment. That was a fitting tribute to the canal trustee. Yes, unfortunately, Ken Bergen, who lives or lived, or should I say, near Easington, right next to the Stroudwater Canal, um, recently passed away. And that was a real shame because he put his heart and soul into the Cotswold Canals Trust. Um, hasn't seen the missing mile and all that link up come to fruition, sadly. So I dedicated that particular video to Ken Burke and, and all of his hard work he put into the Cotswold Canals Trust. And anyway, Diana continues, it's amazing what goes on in planning that the general public isn't party to see, and we aren't aware of all the planning conundrums. That would be a well thought out long-term planning, not just for canals, but for railways as well. And that, yes, that's got me thinking, and what Diana's referring to there is the fact that the outcome of that Latin battle was that now there is legislation in place to prevent canals, be it in service or not, waiting restoration or not, cannot be obliterated. They have to make provision for future restoration if they're building new railways like high speed two or roads and bypasses that sort of thing but surely the same thing should apply to disused railway lines often we've seen that a line of a railway has completely been obliterated by a motorway a road a new housing development which means it can no longer be reopened and of course we need these lines to be reopened to take the pressure off our ever congested routes just a thought there Thank you very much for watching my monthly vlog today. Sorry, it was a little bit of a different format and also more local than I would normally do on the channel, but uh, I'm sure you understand the reasons for that. But I will uh, keep posting what's happening with my father. I will do my very best to still produce content for the channel. As I say, it will be shorter. They will be more local for the reasons I've mentioned earlier in the video, but uh, hopefully they will still be interesting, which I always think is the very, very main thing. Thanks for watching today. And thanks all for your comments and support, which means a lot to me and really helps keep the channel going as well. Well, so uh, I'll see you all soon on the channel again. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.